I just texted Jonathan. He responded a little bit before the call. So, but it's all good. Okay, attendees. Let's see who we got today. Welcome, everybody. I can see y'all coming in. Um, we're just letting everybody in, and uh, it'll take a few minutes for everybody to get into the room. It's growing really fast. We're quickly climbing and already at 20. I uh, hope everybody's doing well. I know last week the uh, uh, everything went off a little weird. That was our scheduling. It was a little screw up on our part. But um, but this week we're going to um, kind of make up for it, get, get into a flow. Um, just so you guys know, uh, we're going to do these live as much as we can on Thursdays. Some Thursdays I'm going to pre-record, but we'll have coaches on the uh, call to answer any questions that come up in regard to the topics. And the only reason I'd pre-record is let's say we got an event going on, like um, I'm going to be uh, speaking somewhere, I'm traveling somewhere, something like that. So, uh, or I'm teaching something, maybe it's during a week long. That way you can still get your Thursday call. We can be super consistent. That's the problem we've had in the past is staying consistent when we have other events going on and we're teaching our privates and our teaching, uh, um, excuse me, our week long programs and things like that. I uh, hope everybody's doing uh, really well. Uh, hello. And um, just let me know. You can all hear me. Put something in the chat. I said we get Roke wrote hello already. So that's awesome. And, uh, and we'll get started here in a little bit. Liam, hey, buddy. What's up? Izat, uh, John. Nice, nice. It's grow. Uh, this is exactly what I wanted. Perfect. We're already at 25 attendees. If we get back to doing these on a regular basis, we'll start getting back up to 100 attendees like we used to. So be on these as much as you can early on because they do grow really fast when we do them on a regular basis. Um, and um, uh, so right now you guys got a much better chance of getting your personal questions answered at 25 attendees before it gets to 100. Um, and um, let me see here, push that down there. I'm gonna push this here. So I'm moving a couple things around so I can uh, answer your questions directly, guys. And be I've got a couple, got a nice, big, beautiful, big screen right here in front of me, which allows me to uh, look more directly at you guys. Um, and uh, instead of down to talk to you guys. Okay, awesome. Let's get started. Um, last week, I talked a lot about tension and flow. Uh, that was the intent. And how many of you heard last week's uh, conversation? It was only about 15, 16 minutes. How tension activates flow. Nice. I'm just going to do a, a, a short kind of conversation about that really quick. And then I'm going to open it up to questions in this area. So I want you to think about questions in relationship to tension. How tension is really one of the most powerful energies for, for uh, growing your life. And we're going to talk about why and, and what it is, but it's not really the tension. The tension is the activator or it's the, um, it's, it's the wake up call. And then what happens is when you get the tension in perfect balance with the, with the, with the vulnerability, which is the feminine tensions of masculine vulnerabilities, of the feminine, you go into a flow state and in that flow state, we is where we grow. It's how we create everything that we want to create. It's where change happens. It's where magic happens. Um, a good example, I always love using surfing because surfing is such a great example because you're literally riding waves of water. In reality, what we're trying to do is get in a flow with waves of, te uh, of uh, waves of energy, tension, emotion, feelings. We're trying to ride those waves. And that's what we're looking, um, what we're looking to do. So, um, I'm going to put this down. I'm going to put your questions down for now. Uh, there we go. So we're looking to get into uh, these flows of energy. And, uh, and so a surfer might ride a big wave, a little wave, a huge wave. Uh, he might become so good at riding waves of energy, uh, waves of water, that he's riding these huge barrels, um, you know, waves where he's ducking into the barrel and riding it uh, in a beautiful way. And so that requires tension. And the, the ability to be comfortable with tension, because to activate that flow, imagine you're on the way of riding it, that's perfect flow, you're in balance with the water, you're in balance with the flow of the water, and you're just your whole body is just moving and adjusting micro movement to micro movement to stay on that board in perfect time with that flow. So, uh, so just kind of think about that for a minute. 
Um, now to activate that, you have to be comfortable with tension. If you're uncomfortable with swimming out, paddling, uh, uh, getting clobbered by waves while you're learning, while you're trying to figure out this perfect balance. Like for example, if you swim too hard and you push too hard, you, the wave could break on top of you and, and, and you're going to get beat up in the wave a little bit and you do it again and you do it again. And eventually that becomes fun. You start learning to become comfortable with the tension of, tr of trying to get into this perfect flow. Same thing with of paddling too weak. You wet, paddle too weak, you miss the wave. It gets away from you. And this is just like life, guys. In life, we do the same thing all the time. Uh, and, and we need to learn to uh, balance and relax into it. When we nail it, flow starts to happen and it starts to move, everything starts to move in this nice rhythmic pattern and it's beautiful. Uh, the example, uh, another example I love to use is the example of a hose, a, a hose running from a spigot to the garden and watering your garden that hose is hooked into a spigot and it's in perfect flow. The tension being the hose itself as the water runs through it in perfect flow being guided all the way to the garden. It's a perfect flow. So it doesn't really feel like tension at that point, but there's tension involved because if that perfect amount of tension wasn't there, it wouldn't flow. Now the over application of tension in that case would be, um, uh, the overapplication of tension in that place, sorry guys, I'll silence this thing, uh, would be the, um, uh, like if you're squeezing the hose or knotting the hose and then it starts to build up and that's where you really feel it is the traditional sense of too much tension, that's stress, that becomes stress at that point. And you build and it begins to feel like crud. And so then the relaxation of that, learning to let go and unknot those knots and start to create the flow again is what we're going for. But without tension, you won't be able to figure that out without getting out there and pushing a little beyond your boundaries and feeling everything tighten up inside you a little bit as, as you get nervous or you, or you go into an unknown territory, something you've never done before and you feel that tension and then practicing relaxing into it. So tension has always got to be relaxed into. And as you learn to relax into and ground more of that tension, you start to create more flow states and more flow states. As you get better at this skill, within with days weeks months and years of doing it you start to get better at creating flow states with different things some of you are already phenomenal at flow states in certain areas of your life maybe it is surfing maybe it is uh, um, uh art maybe you, you get up and you sing or maybe you go into a flow state when you speak or maybe you go into a flow state when you whatever skill that is. Matter of fact, if you go into flow states, maybe it's jogging, running. Some people just, I remember the first, first time I went to a flow state running, I ended up feeling like I was floating, like my body was moving itself. It was amazing. Flirting with women in a bar. The first time I went into a flow state with a woman with women in a bar was amazing. It was like I could do no wrong. I was talking to everybody and I was running up to everybody. Everybody wanted to talk to me. And it was just girls were getting nervous and embarrassed and just turning super feminine when I walked up to them because I was in this this such this flow state. I was grounding so well and my energy was so open. And uh I have to uh uh Anthony, you need to mute, buddy. Um there we go. I have to constantly reestablish those flow states. And, um, and you can see the picture from Anthony from one of our previous workshops there. That's an, that was an awesome. That was in Bucharest, Romania. Um, that's a great picture, Anthony. Um, but uh, uh, but uh, the, the flow states are, are amazing when they happen that way. Where, where did I just end up, leave off? I just left off on a sentence when I got distracted by the picture. I was thinking about it. Uh, what part of that? conversation i could just jump back in if not um anybody got it the feminine what part of the feminine john do you do you have it what was my last sentence uh first time yeah first time in a bar thank you uh so yeah so there's that sense of being in a bar for the first time and i was in that flow and that flow was so beautiful, I could do no wrong because all my energy had opened back up. Now, it didn't mean that I walked back in the bar the next day and that started right up again. Sometimes you go back in and some of your insecurities come up, some of your fears, some of your doubt, some of your worry comes back and you're like, ah, oh, feeling a little heavy again. And then what happens is you push into that tension again. You push back in and you start to, re and as you start to get relaxed back into it, that's when the flow kicks back on.
if you can't get out of your head or you got a lot of stories coming up, maybe the flow never kicks back on. Maybe you're just sitting there fighting it and fighting it and fighting it. And, uh, and that's okay too. Uh, that's just that night. But then the next night you pop back into flow again. And it's because you're ro- moving towards that tension. Now, if you never ever move towards tension, if you never work to step into tension, you're not going to create a uh, flow. You're not going to be able to do it. If you just lay around and do nothing, you're, you're just, that's basically atrophying and die. The balance between moving forward and being present in the moment is what creates flow. The between pushing into penetrating the energy in front of you, which is masculine and surrendering to the moment, which is feminine is what creates flow states. And that balance uh, is, is one of the most beautiful things uh, that you could ever experience. Um, so if you want to grow muscles, you need tension. But then you also need to rest. You need to relax. And when you're in the gym, there's some days when it just feels like pure tension and you're pushing. And there's some days where it feels like you're an animal and your full life and energy is exploding out of your body and you keep hitting new gains. And that's you hitting those flow states on those days. And the more you surrender the mind, the better the flow state's going to be. Matter of fact, you'll reach a point, and I'm going to contradict myself here, where you'll, you'll be like that animal. You won't be like that animal. You'll be tired and you'll be beat, but you'll be surrendered to the fact that your body needs rest and you'll just go into flow state anyways. You won't even maybe be hitting new gains, but you'll be in flow at the level you're at. Maybe it's a lower level of flow or relaxed, comfortable, open-hearted, and then the next day that you'll get more flow. And then as you do that, you're going to start to live more of your life in flow by learning to surrender and work the tension that's right in front of you by learning to create that perfect balance with the tension that's in front of you. And, and you'll learn to step into tension and then pull back out. What a lot of guys do. Now I'm going to talk about the mistake. A lot of guys make a lot of guys. um, They try to step into way too much tension at once. And that's why they can't do it. They have all these fears, anxieties, doubts, and worries and maybe the going into a bar and talking to everybody is a, is a 10, which is means your head's going to explode. And one means it's hardly any tension at all. Zero means no tension. And they go in there and they start doing eights, nines, and tens only. And that's all they're doing. And then they wonder why they get beat down. And, they, and they, it's, like, it's like trying to surf giant waves that are way too big for you and you're just getting crushed. you got to work at the level you're at. And how you activate flow is by playing with ones, twos, threes, fours, right in that range. And, and yeah, once in a while, if you start to get into a flow state with that, you can move up to the eights, nines, and tens. You actually, they start to come down in a sense in, in difficulty. But if you work with those lower level of tensions on a consistent basis and you keep stepping into it, that's where you start creating consistent flow. And then eventually those eights, nines, and tens will come down and meet you at the lower level. Maybe not today, maybe today. It might be that you do a bunch of one, two, threes, and fours right in the beginning, one, twos, and threes. And then suddenly that eight seems like a six and then it seems like a five and then it's just coming down that day. But it might take a few days or a few months of regular work before what used to seem difficult seems easy and normal. And, and then you start to go into a flow with that. So what is a flow state? You know, the zone, the flow. Um, that's, that's that balance I talked about between the masculine and the feminine. It's when you can feel like you can do no wrong. When, when your gut brain takes over, you have your, your, your frontal lobe is holding an idea in mind. And that gut brain takes over and starts telling you exactly what to do. It starts telling you, turn left here, turn right here. Uh, you know, you're running down the street and you're hitting every green light on your, when you're jogging and you're just hopping over things and moving around people in flow or or uh, I've had it in the streets of New York where I'm walking along the streets of New York and I'm and there's giant crowds everywhere and I'm flowing in and out of the crowds like it's nothing. And I'm just popping and, and I'm hitting every green light and I'm adjusting and turning and I'm just listening to my body. It's telling me what to do. It's actually more like taking me on a ride. Uh, I had it in the bars where I felt like I could do no wrong. Go talk to this girl, go say this, do this. And you're just kind of almost doing what your gut brain is telling you to do is you hold the intention in your frontal lobe as to what you're creating that night. And it's what it's doing is your gut brain is guiding you to the image you have in your mind. And the whole body is working in time to create this. And it's such a powerful, healing, beautiful experience. And uh, so many people really, they, they state pump themselves, themselves into it. And that's where they push, push, push really hard to get into a flow state. And then they finally surrender into it. But 
they're more like out of their body flow. And I call that like a state pump flow where they're kind of racy and all over the place, but they're having a blast because they've left their body. I'm talking about being in flow within your body, feeling everything in time with everything. That's more of a meditative experience. This is almost, and, and flow states become like moving meditations and athletes experience them all the time. The top athletes experience them all the time. You know, uh, like I'm sure that, uh, Jordan and Kobe, uh, experienced it on the basketball court and or uh, Muhammad Ali on the, as, a, as a boxer you know it's just these moments that uh, that are they'll probably stick in their minds for the rest of their lives because the moments I've been in flow um, they really stick and I love to have more of it I love being speaking for that reason it's there's a sense of flow and a surrender to the speaking even that's just amazing so um so with that said, hopefully you guys are getting the idea that everything starts with tension in balance with uh, vulnerability, which creates flow state. The one other example is, is nature. Nature flows beautifully. It has to deal with tension and it has to deal with the opening and expression, which is also feminine. So for example, in the spring, it's expressing itself through, through nature and it's beautiful and it's just relaxing and opening and there's this deep sense of flow, waters are flowing and, and plants are blooming and bees are flying and birds are singing and everything's mating. And in the winter, it gets hard and it shuts down and there's more tension. But both of those are a form of flow, just one's a little bit more on, on, the, on this, this, this colder end and one's more on this expressive end. And for a seed to become a tree, you have to plant it in the ground. The seed has to ultimately rot under the ground as it's buried under all this dirt. And then that's what activates it, all that tension, the dirt and the, and the soil melt, uh, rotting away the seed and then it breaks free. First thing it does is it digs downward into the ground and roots itself and, and starts to take nutrients up from the earth. And this is the same as a baby in a womb too. It's, it's be under pressure and it's being prepared in the tension. And then when it's prepared enough, when that tension is, is perfectly, in a sense, baked, uh, created that the root system and the structure of that seed or that baby, in a sense, has built it, then it's birthed and it starts expressing itself. And, and, the, and you see a little sprout come out of the ground. But that sprout is much, much smaller than all the root system it's been creating. And then it starts to grow upwards because the root system is there. The tension formed the, its connection to the earth and gave it the ability to get nutrients to be able to express itself outward in nature above the earth. And that's the same with the baby. This happens everywhere in everything we do. Everything starts internal and deep inside and then gets expressed outside. But it has to be prepared inside like your inner reality before it can be expressed into your outer reality. Your imagination prepares it first and then starts to put it into form through blueprints and plans and drawings. And then eventually it becomes a physical manifestation of all that as you get more people involved in the progression or the creation of your, of your ideal, the perfect ideal in your mind. And that, that transition is done over time. A giant building doesn't just come into form overnight. People imagine it, see it, picture it, draw it, do blueprints for it, get every little detail down. And then everybody works together to bring it into physical reality because the motivation is now there because some somebody wouldn't let go of the image in the frontal lobe and they got into and their mind started their body started to create it and that's the beauty of it so whenever you see somebody rise to the top this is another example of flow when you see somebody just take off and everything just seems to flow for them like the beatles became famous overnight but they didn't because they spent years in bars practicing their, their craft is nobody's years and years and years. They didn't rise up slowly though. They practice, 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 struggling as a band, but, but working their ass off, probably in flow in many of the bars and built this powerful sense of, of oneness with their music till eventually one night they were an overnight success. They just took off because, the, the, because all that compounding interest, the root structure, the system under the ground was built and they took off. Well, you're all doing that with whatever you want to create, whether it's dating, relationships, sexuality, uh, business, money, um, health, you know, we're, we're building more and more of an understanding, a deep inner structure for it all to express outside of ourselves. You know, um, when you look at somebody and say, oh, 
that person's got a, uh, that person's in great shape. He's got six pack abs and a lot of muscles. And, and you think, oh, he's just, you know, I wish I could be like that. Well, if you're willing to build the systems that this person built through the structure, the inner work, the understanding, the learning, you can express out like that. But we all, and, and, and the key is, do you want to? Because you're not going to, you can't do it. At, you can't do this with everything. You're going to do it with the things that matter. And so you got to decide what's really important to you to allow yourself to be able to create this perfect dance between tension and feeling and ultimately creating these flow states that move you in the direction of where you want to go. Now, if you're working on something, this is another important thing. It just popped into my mind. I think it's so important. If you're creating, working, or building something and it's nothing but a fight and you never hit any flows with it and, you, and all you do is feel heavy and low, you got to ask yourself, why is that? You know, are you moving in the wrong direction for your life? Or do you have a bunch of stories you're not facing about what you're doing, about, uh, about I'm not good enough and all your self-esteem stuff? I mean, these are ultimately, this is ultimately the inner workings that has to be taken care of. Just like all those years the Beatles spent playing uh, in dingy bars. You know, I guarantee you they had a lot of fun doing that, but it was work too. And if your work is just work and no fun, that tells you something. You're all, ma you're all on the heavy masculine side and no feminine. You need both energies. And if it's all fun and there's no structure, that's going to fall apart too. See, that balance has to be in everything. So tension ultimately is, the guy, is what you step into and then you surrender in from, use the tension as a container to surrender into the flow to create feeling. And as you, uh, to surrender into the feeling, excuse me, to create flow. And that ultimately is why growing, creating, building businesses, building relationships, building dating skills, even dating in general becomes so much fun. It's that skill, that ability. This is why the early pickup artists were so bad with women because they, they modeled guys that could go into flow with women. Like they could ground, they were masculine, but then they went into flow and they had a blast and they loved women, they enjoyed women, they had all the right emotional states. They took out the emotional states and tried to model the structure of what they did and just do the structure. Well, without the transmission of all those emotional states that those naturals are transmitting to the women, it doesn't work. The feeling, the heart, the turn on, the, you know, the grounding, if it's just all analytical, I'm going to stand like this, walk like this, talk like this. They, they're actually av avoiding all of it. And all they're going to probably end up doing is creating a bunch of unfun tension in the end. And 10 years later, they're still going to suck and probably be worse if they don't resolve that piece, which is what I've seen. Um, so hopefully this connects. It's an a interesting conversation I wanted to have. And I'm kind of just kind of go a little deeper on what we had last week. And I contemplate this stuff all the time. I love it. So um, um you're, you were saying you have to constantly redo the flow states. Yes. You I mean the flow states don't last forever unless you become, I would say that an enlightened being is probably living more in a flow state than anybody. But for the, uh, for the average person, you're going in and out of flow all the time, you know? Um, and so we're, we're slowly over as we evolve, learning to stay more and more in flow state, especially with the things we love. Um, okay. So let's jump to some of these questions, guys. Uh, I already got five questions in here. Does anybody have questions around this? We'll take a look at it. Um, I might hold off on letting you guys put questions in here in the future. We'll debate this until I'm done with the talk because a lot of it gets covered in the talk and then you guys ask questions that don't relate to the talk. Um, Okay, I'm going to see if I can, uh, Vikran, you wrote this at 11.08 before I even gave the talk. So, did, as, uh, uh, so I'm going to look at these. I'm going to see if I can relate them back to the talk. If I can't, I'm going to just ditch them. And you can ask a question next week. Because sometimes we'll have open Q&As where we can talk about anything. Um, so we're just going to dive in. Uh, so I'll read it really quick, just makes you get a sense of it. I have trouble getting attention from women when I meet them first, cold approach. How can I get my foot in the door? I feel confident of me later once the first date is set up until then I do practice because uh, you're not relaxing into the tension. There's a lot of tension when you walk up to somebody. This is the, exactly what I was talking about, the flow states. There's a lot of tension when you walk up to somebody you don't know. Matter of fact, you don't know how that woman's going to treat you. You don't know how she's going to react. You know nothing about her. You get to know somebody for 10, 20, 30 minutes a day, two dates, 
yeah, you got a you 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 you've got a sense of validation. You've got a sense of how they think. You got a sense of how you can be with them to cause them to react to you in positive ways, and you also got a sense of how nice or not nice they are. That that woman walking down the street, you don't even know her name. You don't know if she's a bitch or if she's sweet. You don't know if she's open or she's closed. You don't know if she's gonna be welcoming or she's gonna be mean. So um, so you you have to start to accept that that idea. And if you go up and you feel this sense of rising up in your body, Vikrant, and this is really important, that's anti-flow. There's this sense that all my body's tensing and I'm rising up, 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 up. And I'm, and then I start to say, hi, my name is Brian. And I'm, that's me speaking from my head. Now, if I relax back down into my body and I'm no longer worried about what this unknown is thinking of me, this person I've never met, male or female. I'm not worried about how they're going to treat me and I'm just carefree and I'm free from outcome and I'm having a good time and I'm going to invite them into that reality. They're more likely going to respond to you well. So there's a sense I drop back down and if I get the lower I get my body, the better they're going to respond. I start to ground. I start to feel my stomach. I start to feel my heart open. And then the difference is, hi, what's your name? Hey, I just saw you from over there and I had to come say hi. That's very different than me being locked, I'm going to lock out a little bit here, pull back and hi, um, I saw you from over there and I just had to come say hi. You can feel the difference in my voice and in my prep, the way I look and my facial expressions and, uh, or even worse, hi, um, you know, I just want to say hi, I don't mean to bother you. That's apologizing for being, you know, or really pushing. Hi, um, I just want to say hi, I saw you from over there and you know, you're, that's what guys do, they over push, but if you just relax, hey, what's up? How you doing today? Yeah, you know, I saw you and you know, you have a great energy about you. And I just wanted to say hi. Hey, Superman, Eddie, what's up, buddy? Um, and so just kind of notice that the difference in the way I'm speaking. One, I'm relaxing into the tension of the unknown and enjoying it, riding the wave. In the other, I'm fighting it. Okay. Um, is that, uh, does tension mean pain? Or is pain tension? Um, no, tension does not mean pain. Uh, I'm talking about pain out of fear, fear of remaining stuck, or pain out of anxiety or shame from the past. Is that all tension? Well, it's all tension, but it doesn't have to mean pain. You're, you decide if the tension is painful or not. Like I can go to the gym and lift weights and it can feel freaking great. I can stretch and it can feel great. It can be painful and feel good too. Like some people just like get in there and they're, ah, it feels really good. I can jump out of a plane. It can be a blast and scary or it can be a blast and horrible. Um, so you have a relationship to tension. You have a relationship to anxiety and fear. If your relationship to discomfort is negative, that's one of the first things that I would change. How, where in the life do I enjoy tension? Where in the life do I enjoy fear? Do I go to love fear, scary movies? Uh, do I like the Halloween hunt at, at amusement parks? Do I like, um, you know, where's, and start learning from that, you know, because some guys to approach women get scared and they love it. They're like, oh, I can't wait. And some guys approach women and hate it. That is not about approaching women. That's about you and your relationship to fear and tension to responsibility, to whatever the story is in your head. And the more you relax into that and start to change your whole worldview of tension, the tension doesn't have to be pain. Yeah, if it's too much tension, like I said, there's a scale of one to 10 and you're, if it tens, my head's going to explode. You know, that's, that's no good. But if you're playing with one, twos, threes, and fours, you should be able to enjoy the tension, relax into it. Even a massage has a certain amount of tension in it right? Otherwise, they're not touching your body and pushing on it. And it can even be painful if they dig into a knot and then there's that release. And some people love that. So where do you land? Are you the type of person that's avoiding all tension in your life, running from tension? Then your life's not going to go anywhere because you have a bad relationship to the very activating force that grows your life and everybody's life. And if you're constantly running from stress and tension, you're actually telling your subconscious mind, that uh, stress and tension is, is, is damaging me. Therefore, that's going to be the, the, the result in your life. You're going to have a really bad relationship to growth. You can't grow with that type of mindset. Um, so watch Kelly McGonigal's How to Make Stress Your Friend. It's a TED Talk. Just watch that. It will enlighten you a lot on this topic. It's 17 minutes long, so go look it up. Um, 
Uh, so, uh, so does tension mean pain? No. Or is pain tension? Pain can be. It, it, pain is often tension. There's also a vulnerability in pain too. It can be tension like resistance or a vulnerability feeling all the emotions and depth of feeling. Um, uh, talking about the, the pain of fear of remaining stuck. Well, that, that can be a beautiful mechanism that tells you you're not moving in the right direction. You're not taking action. You're atrophying. Or the pain or anxiety uh, or the shame from the past. That's something you're not facing and dealing and letting go. That, en that energy wants to be freed up again. It doesn't want to be stuck in the past. So if you keep pushing it down, it's going to cause lifelong chronic pain. It might cause some short, intense pain while you work through it. But you could be through it in a short period of time and then have all that energy reclaimed in your body. So all of these, there's, it's the balance between tension and vulnerability with those two things. Emotions are more on the vulnerability tension. So you could call it vulnerable tension. Then there's the physical tension, pushing through something, lifting weights, and they balance off of each other. Um, okay, Liam, let's check what you got going on. Hey, Brian, I noticed that right now in life, I feel unclear about what I'm feeling and in different areas of my life, I notice I'm avoiding tension or forcing myself. So you're, yeah, you're polarizing, right? Between avoiding and pushing really hard, avoiding, pushing really hard. You're not playing in the sweet spots. How can I get back into flow and more receptive states, relax deeper into what is now by playing in the sweet spots? Uh, also side note, I'm forcing my happiness rather than choosing. Well, that's not happiness. That's lying to yourself. Uh, I've been sh uh, feeling a lot of anxiousness with, that too, observing people versus living my life. Any suggestions on getting out of this crude uh, mood? Uh, exactly, play in the sweet spots, Liam. Um, so on a scale of one to 10, 10 being I, it's more tension than I can handle, one being just a little bit and zero being none, like I'm laying in a hammock, there's still technically tension because there's gravity and I'm relaxing in a perfect cool breeze. Play in the, start by playing a lot in the one, twos and threes. Matter of fact, take a journal, Go out and for a half hour straight, play with one, twos, threes, maybe occasional fours. And just walk around and say, where's the, go to a crowded area or a semi-crowded area that's relaxing and say, maybe a park or a beach and just say, where's tension that I can, that I can step into right now? By choice, not by have to. It's got to all be by choice. You, you can't, if you have to do it, it's not the, it's not the right tension. So uh, a great example uh, that Sam, one of our coaches gave is that he'll be walking down the street. Let's say somebody drops a piece of trash on the, on the ground and you just walk by and everybody sees it, everybody's standing there and you smile at people and you just pick it up and you walk over to the trash can and throw it away. Some people get embarrassed by that, but in a mild way, like a one, two or a three. And then you walk down the street and somebody's walking by you that's kind of cute and you just say, hey, what's up? And then just continue to walk. Maybe you continue on down the street and you see somebody with a really cool skateboard. So you turn and you walk. I'm picturing myself in Central Park for some reason. Then you walk over and go, hey, I'm, the skateboard's awesome. Can, um, well, you know, I, I've been wanting to get one of these kind of long boards. Can, is this, you know, and, and one of the things I've been playing with is the, uh, uh, these lower boards. You know, that's the one I'm picturing. And, you know, is this actually more connected to the ground? What does it feel like? And then maybe let you uh, try it for a second. Then you continue on down the street. And you see somebody walking by you that has a beautiful dress on, a beautiful, attractive, you know, I love your dress. That's so beautiful as you pass by. And again, you're not even approaching people yet. You're just being, stepping in and playing with tension. Maybe then you're walking a little farther down the street and uh, <clears throat> you decide to sit on a park bench for three minutes and say hi to everybody that walks by. Hey, how you doing? How you doing? Just waving to people. Then you journal about all this. You don't journal what went wrong. You journal what you're learning but you stay with those one, twos, and threes. As a matter of fact, can everybody do this? Can, who in this crowd, if you were to go to the chat right now, is willing to do this within the next two days or by the end of this weekend? Just straight, boom, 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 boom. Who's willing to do this? Think about it. Now, I'm gonna give you another version of it. Do it every day. Pick three things that you can do this with every day. And then once a week, twice a week, do a half hour straight or every day do a half hour straight, whatever you want to do, or you will oscillate the two on days. You're really busy. You pick three to five things you can step into tension with throughout the day. And on days you're not busy, you take a half hour out of your day and you work on getting some flow out of the tension, just one for a half hour straight. 
and then you journal it all and you keep journaling what you're learning what you're realizing and what you'll notice is what used to be a seven or an eight starts to become threes eventually twos ones it might take a week might take a month it might take but in three months your whole life will change because of this okay and that's why you're and you're concentrating on how that when the tension act actually turns into flow i love how many people wrote yes that's awesome Okay, um, let's continue on here with these questions. Okay, Andre, boy, this is a big one. Guys, you got, this is, sometimes you write these long ones and I want to skip them, I'm going to be honest, because I have to read them and I have to keep a whole audience entertained. So if you can't get to the point, uh, sometimes it's, it's more than I, I, you know, when I'm, because I'm talking to so many people at once, not one person. Uh, I sometimes have to skip them. So I'll try to get through this one. Uh, but you guys got to be really cognizant of that, that. There's a whole group of people that I'm teaching together. And I and uh, and if you're not getting to the point, it's, it makes it much more difficult. Uh, Brian, since I began this journey of releasing, I feel more nervous than ever. I guess it's easier to have a persona of dancing monkey than to feel, okay, got dancing monkey. I get very nervous. Okay, you get nervous. Taking and talking in front of people at a webinar, for example, okay. I, and I think of myself, that's not me. I hate shaky. Okay. I try to welcome it. Uh, the more aware of it I am, the more I feel it. I'm going in the wrong direction. Okay. I have some. Okay, this is all about you just feeling like shit in the beginning and, and being scared. Uh, so you need to write that much more succinctly. In small groups, I think no one wants to work with me. Uh, I have see now you see and then I say this to you and, you, and you, by doing this, you get me to say. See, we all get people to treat us a certain way, and all this rambling causes people to push you away. And you're rambling through the whole thing, and you're actually creating it. Uh, your question is super valid, though. Uh, it's a super powerful question. Um, Uh, get our, re our our revealing course and learn to re release and reveal all these stories you have about you not being good enough. That's a simple answer, Andre. Uh, or get the Hawkins book, Letting Go, or or Sedona Method, something like that, and just dig into, watch my videos. I got lots of them out there on releasing and revealing, and start digging into your subconscious mind and releasing all these stories that you're not good enough. Um, and stop thinking so much and stop studying so much science right now for a while till you get there, uh, till you start to relax in this area. You just got a lot of negative stories. I mean, you are a computer program. I'm going to tell you right now, Andre, this, none of this stuff is true or false. You just create it. You make it true or false through your programming. You act in accordance with a way that's going to get people to reject you and therefore they reject you. Act in accordance with a way that's going to be able to open you based on your beliefs. Your beliefs cause you to do certain things. That's what fear does. It, it creates anxiety, which then you push onto other people and causes other people to want to reject you because they don't want to feel your anxiety. It's not that they don't like you. Um, there's not a person on this planet that's not interesting if they drop all their stories. So once you start to go through your programs, your thoughts, your beliefs, and all the emotions tied to them and start to understand how emotions work, you start to let it all go. You got So you got to get learn to feel your emotions and release them because that's ultimately what we're doing. The story is compounded through emotions. So you got to learn to feel these emotions, release them, feel these emotions, release them, feel these emotions, release them. And that's what uh, the releasing process is really about. It's about welcoming up your stories, getting in touch with all the emotions and feelings in your body attached to them, holding them in place. The attachments, as Buddha said, the source of all suffering is attachment and then learning to let it go. And that's what it comes down to. Okay, Andre? So uh, I know you can get through this, but uh, it's going to suck because you're going to constantly buy back in. Because right here, I can feel the buy-in. You've bought into these stories, so you think they're real. And that's the first thing you got to do is disidentify with the buy-in. You got to learn to disidentify with the stories in your head, let them go, and move forward anyways. And then and learn to say, oh, there's that part of me. I do it all the time. There's that part of me attacking myself. I'm just going to listen to it for a while. And I laugh at it, and I joke with it, and I play with it, and then eventually it releases. And then I let it go because I don't buy into my stories anymore. It doesn't mean I don't have them. I see them and I hear them, but I know they're just a program. They're a set of neuron, neur neural pathways in my brain that are just firing, popping up that story from when I was a child. Okay, let's let those neural pathways die out now and start to relax and the body relaxes a little more. And every time I do that, I gain a little more confidence, a little more energy, a little more self-esteem because I'm untying all that old, old programming. 
that we naturally pick up. Even with the best parenting, we're going to pick it up because it's part of learning to function in the physical world, to going from a, a being that has no programming at all, no language, no ability to, to function in the physical world, to learning how to work in society, to eventually learning to go free without, while still understanding all that. It's a consciousness development process, and none of it is good or bad. It's just how we go. And we've all got our, uh, we've all got victim shit. I mean, we all get, we all have our victim stories. And the question is, is do you buy into yours or not? And can you start to let them go? Um, Jason saying the guided releases on the YouTube channel are great too. So, um, and, uh, and so the more you learn, if you get an overall, if you're just trying to ask somebody to do it for you, you're never going to get there, Andre. So it's great that people tell you, you know, uh, this is this, that, the other. You have to make a concerted effort to go after your stories. Work with people that understand. Ask them to help you get good at releasing your own stories. As a hypnotist, I used to like sit there and work with people that wanted to change something. I'd do a little succession. They'd go home and listen to the tape. But where the real true value, true personal growth is in me guiding you to become an expert at your own at at getting this stuff out yourself. And that's where you're going to, I'm teaching you to fish. I'm not giving you a fish. So if you're looking for somebody that's just going to give you a fish, that's not me. I stopped doing that years ago because it, it's just, it doesn't have the long-term powerful effect that you guys need. I teach people and I'll do releases with people, but in the same process, I'm teaching people how to change their subconscious and their life and their energy and their beliefs. And that's what really makes it work. Okay. Um, and yes, uh, basic meditation can be good for calming your mind when it gets out of control to create that disidentification, but that's all part of revealing too. Uh, Roke, uh, when I talk to women, they seem to repel. Okay. Congratulations. There's no question there, Roke. Uh, so I can't really, I don't know what you're wanting to talk about. It's probably because you're ungrounded, you're angry, you're sad, something's going on like that. So, uh, you have to have a question there, buddy. Um, and so I already talked about uh, that, that if you're ungrounded or in your head, it'll repel women. Uh, if you're disconnected from your body, if you're playing the victim, you know, there's, it could be a million things. Um, it could be that you have bad, uh, you know, body odor. It could be that you're not, that they're not repelled and you're projecting it onto them. Uh, a lot of you guys, I've had so many clients do that. Women actually like them and they walk away because a woman look at them funny once or test them once and they walk away. So there's a million possibilities there, buddy. Um, uh, does location or city or maybe even country you are living in have anything to do with you not being able to experience having a flow state? Not a flow state, no. I live in Munich where, uh, where it's conservative. Nothing wrong with conservatives. I like conservatives. I get along with them. And all about conforming and looking or being correct all the time. That's your story. I guarantee you that wouldn't happen to me in, 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 in Munich. Girls and people generally are very judgmental. That's your story too. Uh, is that just my unconscious? My, yeah, that's your mind making up excuses. Um, I'm not going to say you can't be in a community where they they don't have more uh, overall um, beliefs that say you should or shouldn't do this. That can definitely happen. But still, are you letting it affect you? You know, and I'm not saying Munich. I don't think Munich's bad that way at all. Probably um, now. Try going to the Middle East. You're going to have a whole different set of problems. Um, uh, uh, so, you know, Europe, you're fine. Um, and if you are a judgmental person, which you probably are, you're probably judging everybody else, the, how they're being, and, and you, maybe internally, and you're not doing it externally, then you're going to feel judged by everybody else. And you're going to worry about what everybody else thinks of you. And it gets projected onto everybody else. And then what's going to happen is as they feel your, your micro expressions, your subcommunication is closed off, and, and which is what's going to happen when you're judgmental. Uh, you're going to create these micro expressions that are closed off. They're immediately going to close off around you and you're going to feel them as more judgmental. The more open and accepting you are, the more free flowing you are. And, you don't, and even when somebody else is judgmental and the more accepting of that person they are, the more they start dropping their walls. And that's all over the planet. Almost everybody's got a ton of defense mechanisms. The guy that walks up with an open heart that's accepting and loving, they start dropping that stuff really fast. And the guy that gives the girls permission to be free, they start dropping that stuff really fast. Um, and so, uh, so almost everybody loves to make excuses about the town they're in, the home they're in, something like that. And if it's really that bad, go somewhere else. See what it's like. 
Uh, sometimes you go somewhere else that's new and you think it's better. Now, there, I will say there are better communities for meeting women. Like if you, Eastern Europe has a lot of beautiful women. Uh, and so, and a lot of single beautiful women. That's a little better than say going to uh, some little town in the middle of nowhere, for sure. But Munich's a pretty big city and I imagine there's a lot of beautiful women there and conservative women uh, are very uh, fun women. I don't have a problem with conservative women unless you're talking about like you're in a, a Amish community where they're all completely shut down, you know, something like that. That's a whole different level of conservative, but I haven't heard that about Munich, so. Um, okay. Connecticut. I go to New York City to approach. I don't know how New York's been lately. We were supposed to be there right now, pretty much right now, but we canceled all our trips for this year. Um, and so, uh, New York is freaking great. We meet women, no problem in New York. Uh, at least before the COVID thing, I don't know. I'm sure it's, it's even with COVID, guys go out and meet women here in LA all the time, meet women at the airport all the time. It's so, and so New York would even be easier. Ah, COVID doesn't stop them. Girls go, I want to go on dates. They're sitting at home. They're bored. Um, God, we've done workshops during COVID and guys go out and meet girls. They have no problem here in LA where there's way less women walking the streets. So, um, so Shane, hi, Brian, I have a bit of issue trying to be perfect at this so I can get what I want or avoid rejection or humiliation. Yeah, that's a big problem that a lot of guys come to us with. It's desire to get it right, desire to be perfect, to want to do, you know, do it right the first time. They don't take feedback well when they're like that too. So it's hard. They want to grow, but they want the feedback. But then when they get it, they want to defend all their, their positions and they want to talk about, oh, uh, you know, a guy will be in the middle of practicing with one of our models and we're doing work and he's starting to ground him out. And then suddenly he gets a little bit of feedback and he goes, oh, yeah, 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 I need to work on that. Well, that's what we're doing right now. Why are we talking? Don't talk about it. Do it. Get back in there. Don't talk about it. That's him trying to get out of the work because he's embarrassed or ashamed. Uh, I might be trying to become Don Juan. Yeah, that's you're not going to jump right to Don Juan. You're going to have to build your way up just like everybody. Just a bodybuilder doesn't lift weights one day, wake up the next day with giant muscles. Uh, I feel I need to get better at indifference to outcome. And, and but, be, but also, yeah, that would help a lot, especially with feedback so you can grow, get that innocence with feedback, but also not bypassing going and getting what I want when it comes to women. Indifference to outcome doesn't mean you're, you, you stop wanting anything. It means you're indifference to the outcome. You still can choose stuff. There's a difference between indifference and indifference to outcome. Indifference means I don't care about anything. Indifference to outcome means I'm not attached to the outcome. I can still choose a beautiful woman. I can choose getting validation. I can choose sex. I can choose an amazing date. And if I don't get it, that's okay too. I'll just move. It's going to come from somewhere and I'm going to go somewhere else. So, uh, so change the way you think of it. Indifference to outcome means you are happy whether you get your goal or not. And that is the key to releasing, is learning to be happy whether you get your goal or not, which then causes the goal to come to you much faster than the other way. The other way causes uh, nothing but pain. You know, you have to go through a ton of pain before you get the goal, and that's part of the problem. Um, yeah, I'm muting this other phone. I have two of them, and they keep going off. Uh, okay, let's go on. Um, yeah, well, what you resist to p uh, persist, Izat. So I said, Izat wrote, you have to, you mentioned in one of your sessions not to resist pain. What you resist persists. It actually, actually can amplify. Um, and so uh, imagine you're lifting weights every day. You're squatting and you hate squatting. You resist squatting. You don't want to squat. And every day or every three days a week, you go to squat. How long before you hurt yourself? How long before you quit and you never go back? Um, you have to change your relationship to what you perceive as pain so the pain can start to become beautiful and fun so you can get into a relationship with it so you don't resist it, so you don't fight it, so you don't hurt yourself. You know, Ultimately, I would much rather feel all the grief of a breakup right away, cry, get it out of my system, somebody I was in love with, and let them go rather than bury it down in my nervous system for five, ten years and fuck up five years of my life because I don't want to face it and I push it down and numb myself out and numb out part of my life force and part of my soul because I don't want to feel it. 
And then it comes out five years later and I'm bawling like a little kid over this relationship has been gone for five years. And did you see what I, you see? That's how people screw up their lives. And it's, it's, uh, it's, it's not pretty. Um, okay. Let's continue on. Gene. Um, it's not a question, but something I want to share about tension. And I realized this week, okay. Uh, what I now call 10 seconds to live all my life. I've always avoided to go for my deepest desires because of 10, 15 seconds of huge tension, that tension before starting a conversation, that tension before doing the dishes or anything really. It's so crazy to avoid 20 seconds of huge discomfort. Um, when on the, uh, on the other side is freedom to live. Also, uh, excessive thinking is really uh, the thing that changed for me since two weeks in silence when I uh, quiet down my mind. Everything is so much clearer. Now, what you're talking about there is not new, Gene. Now, you, you may have just realized it, but that's, there are people who have written books on that. Um, uh, mystery back in the old pickup days, three seconds, uh, three second rule, approach within three seconds. Don't, otherwise your mind's going to start building thoughts. Thoughts are going to compound. They're going to start to grow. You're going to get more thoughts about why you can't approach, why you're afraid. And you're going to build a habit of anxiety before approach. Um, there's another, uh, another book that was written about, is it the, what was it? I call, uh, what was that book where the woman like count down from five to one? What's her name? Anybody know? And um, Mel Robbins. Mel mm -hmm. Robbins. Yeah, she wrote a whole book on it, how it changed her life. And she's, she, it's just a best selling book about she would just do exactly what you're doing, but she, it was five seconds for her five, four, three, two, one, go. And she would go and stop her thinking all the time, all day long. It was just a habit she was building. It changed her whole life and she taught it to other people too. So uh, it's a very powerful process and it cuts, it cuts through the thinking. Now, at first, when you start to do it, you might build a bunch of anxiety at the fear of even doing it. But the more you do it, the more you'll just stay in action with it. And, um, and, and, and just don't become obsessive with it to where you don't take any time to relax either. So there's got to be a, every day needs a period and every period is a, there's a, like, like let's say you work for anywhere from 45 to 90 minutes straight. That's the period you're five, four, three, two, one, go, 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 get stuff done. And then you take 20 to 30 minutes to relax and stop altogether and meditate and spend that time in silence. Then you work again for another 45 to 90 minutes. And how you determine the 45 to 90 minutes is how prepared you are for that day. Um, are you, uh, did you get a good rest? Did you sleep well? Do you feel good? If you're feeling really solid, 90 minutes. If you're feeling more tired, the work period will be 45 minutes. And then you take that break and recharge. What that's doing is when you work, you're amping up cortisol. And if you never bring the cortisol down, you're going to sleep terrible and feel like shit and you're not going to be recharged. And when you take the break, you're amping up DHEA and, and, uh, you're, and you're using the hormones the way they're meant to be used. And you're replenishing your DHEA. I'll listen to good music. I'll relax. I'll listen to stuff that, only, that doesn't make me think but actually slows me down. Go sit in the sun. And then, boom, amp up cortisol again and go. Five-second rule. Go. Boom, boom, boom. And, um, and there you go. You know, um, so it's, uh, it's, a great, it's a great process. Uh, Erich, uh, is there any group of men that applying the fearless principles will not improve your dating? I don't know of any. Um, and if so, how would I know? I'm, I'm not sure what, the, what kind of men are you thinking about? And if so, how would I know if I'm in that group? I've done nine fearless programs and done 36 direct approaches asking for phone numbers and dates in the past month and a half. You've done nine fearless programs in a month and a half. We haven't, you're not talking about live programs. You're talking about like you've watched something online nine times or I got, uh, because in, um, in 36 direct uh, approaches asking for phone numbers and dates in the past month and a half, I got three numbers and only one of them texts me back, no dates. You sounds like you're just pushing. You're not learning the, the feeling side. So a lot of guys hear the tension side and they think it's all about tension, 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 tension. No, you got it's gotta be in balance with the feeling side. Like I talk about this all the time. You're probably pushing from up here and you're not relaxing into your body. Um, so uh, have you been in a workshop? Have you been in a seminar? I mean, are you talking about online stuff? Um, staff, do you guys know who this is? Um, and 36 direct approaches is, is honestly not much. I've done 
I've done a, you know, when you're learning, I've done 36, I've stopped people on the street more than that in a day, sometimes just for practice, just for having fun, just having direct, bold conversations, saying bold things. Um, so, um, but the real key, you don't, you shouldn't have to do that much. 36 shouldn't take that. If you're really in feeling and in flowing, uh, uh, everything will start to change for you and uh, you'll start to feel your body. So uh, I'd have to see how you're being, but are you, are you working on feeling or are you just working on tension, Erich? Um, we do get people that come in that are way behind the eight ball and they got a lot of work to do. And sometimes they don't listen well, they fight and they, they fight. And I, I was one of those, you know, I, when, I, when I first started, I was very in my head, analyzing, fighting. And I had a teacher that had to pound me over the head to get me to feel because I didn't want to feel when I was around people. I could feel on my own. And so I kept having to work and work and work to get there. Now, the question I would have is, how much improvement have you got in your life? How much has your life changed? Or do you even look at the improvement or you just look at what's wrong? And what, that's another thing I, I often see with people. We used to see this in hypnosis all the time. People would come in and they would get lots of improvement, and, but they couldn't see it. Because every time they drop to an old behavior, they don't look at it again. It just floats away and they, and they get a new behavior. For example, when we used to do weight loss, people would come in and say, has anything changed? They'd say, no, I'm, I'm perfectly the same. Everything's the same after doing the hypnosis sessions. And I'd say, then I'd hand them a checklist of pop potential things that could have changed in the way they're relating to their food. And then they'll check off half the check boxes. And they go, wow, I didn't realize I was doing that many things differently. Um, and that's because they, their mind doesn't track what they've let go of. It only tracks. If you have the habit of tracking what's wrong, you're going to grow. First off, you're going to grow really slow. Second of all, you're only going to see what's wrong. Um, cause you, that's the program. I'm going to look for something else that's wrong. I'm going to look for something. This is fixed. I'm going to look for something else that's wrong. You just keep amplifying problems. The law of attraction, law of attraction basically states what you focus on expands. Um, and so if you keep focusing on what's wrong and you, and you, and then this is why we have the 1% rule and you're not good at seeing the 1% improvements, then, uh, then you're, you're going to fight all the way to the top. You're going to fight all the way up. I fought for a long time, but I was super, um, what was it? What's the term? Um, learned helplessness. I had a lot of learned helplessness. I thought everything was wrong, thought everything was broken. And that's the number one reason it takes a long time for people is uh, as they, 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 you know, that that's what, how they're looking at everything. Um, or they're not willing to look at what's really going on inside of them. They're not willing to look at the emotions or just looking for a way to, to jam or a square peg into a round hole and get it done. And um, they're not developing a relationship to what they're feeling. So, um, so that's, that's what I've got so far. Um, uh, now I would like to dig a little deeper into this. I'll, uh, I'll talk to the staff. Who, who do you work with, Erich? Who have you worked with? Like your coach, you have a main coach, right? If you've done that kind of work, you've got a main coach. So type it into the chat box. Cause we have a guy that just did the first experience this last weekend. He's already, he hadn't been, had a, he hadn't had sex in two years and he's on his way home. He met a girl and they've been having sex and his life has already radically changed. Um, okay. I'll talk to, uh, I'll talk to Anthony. Um, and, um, and so these types of things. Now the question I'd have is how much has your life changed? And uh, maybe it's changing in other areas first. Uh, things like that. So, so uh, okay. I'm going to move on here a little bit. Um, as a matter of fact, I had one student who <laughs> was a virgin, 27 years old. We got an interview with him. And he he's had more sex. Now he's like 30-something. He's like, dear God, he went nuts. Um I had more sex after breaking up after losing his virginity than anybody on the on the planet should have. Um, okay, what's a one, two, or three? Uh, did you miss that part of the talk? Scale of one to ten, how much tension are you playing with? Are you playing with tens, eights? Like ten is too much. A one, two, or three is very easy. I did a very detailed description of it in the video. Uh, where I broke it down. I did a whole scenario where I'm walking through Central Park and, and all the stuff I'm doing. So 
listen to that video, go back and listen to this when it's back on the YouTube channel. So I'm not going to go through that again. It was very detailed, uh, Samir. So maybe it came in late, but just listen to the replay and look for that part. Okay. Um, Brian, uh, when comes next after shutting down the whole nice guy facade, my mom and friends think I'm mad at them and yet I feel like I'm being real. What comes next after shutting down the whole nice guy facade? Yeah, typically nice guys, when they start shutting down the nice guy, they go into, an, um, they go into anger for a while. And, you, and uh, you probably are mad. You probably have anger that's repressed. They're probably picking up on it and that's not abnormal. And so um, it's probably coming out through your subcommunication and you're not willing to accept it yet. Mo almost every nice guy's got tons of repressed anger. Read No More Mr. Nice Guy, Brian. And the first time I read No More Mr. Nice Guy, it popped me. It, like I, I got a huge emotional reaction of anger and I went home and yelled at my girlfriend and then apologized for it later. Uh, that's because the reason we're nice guys, we're constantly pushing down our, our anger our, and we're constantly pushing down our desire, our own desires, wants, needs and desires, and we're getting angry over it we're constantly doing what everybody else wants to do and not what we want to do. And so when we finally start standing up for ourselves, we don't know how to do it in a relaxed, comfortable, joyful way. So we start with anger. There's nothing wrong with that. You got to learn to ride that anger, release that anger, deal with that anger. So releasing mixed with no more Mr. Nice Guy is a powerful process for getting through that. Um, okay, let's continue on. In one of your webinars or YouTube videos, I don't remember which one, you mentioned that our micro expressions make other people treat us a certain way. Uh, I've said it today. This was quite mind blowing for me when I heard it because it feels so true for me. Can you please do a webinar or a video on micro expressions and subcommunication? I have many. Um, a lot of the videos I'm demonstrating micro expressions. I've done it a little bit in this one too. Uh, I didn't say call it micro expressions, but I demonstrated being in my head and down, which changes my micro expressions. Um, um, but I'm constantly looking at all the products where we're, we're doing demos with women, walking up to women, uh, all that kind of stuff. It's a uh, it's very powerful and a very deep topic. And I in the fearless man lies, we go over a lot of micro expressions, which we got one coming up, right, guys? Um, and uh, so. In that sense, it's it's super true. When we go do the highs, you go out to the street and, and we just walk down a busy street and say hi to everybody. A lot of people, when they first say hi, don't get much response. Everybody kind of just like maybe turns their head, ignores them, looks up, looks away. Or they, if they're really being strange, like they're, high, they're really pushing over the highs, people kind of pull back and feel uncomfortable. And then let's say a coach does it. And you see how the coach is so relaxed and comfortable saying hi to people and is enjoying it and their heart opens and they look at people, hey, how you doing? Look at people from farther down the street, not the last minute. And they're like, what's up? How you doing? Hey, nice dress. Hey, um, whatever. You know, you got a cute dog and they're just flowing. That flow state starts to kick in. And that those highs are received so much better. At least 60% of people will nod, smile, wave back. Some people actually stop and talk to you. Some people start saying hi very loudly. But in the beginning, if I wall off and shut off, go back to my head and start saying hi, everybody starts turning away from me again. Well, this happens in conversation. This happens in everything we do. A lot of times I get up in the morning, I don't want to talk to people. My subcommunication is a little shut down. And I'm walking down the street and I, I keep it that way on purpose. Why? Because I don't want people talking to me. But then when I start opening, people start smiling more, start connecting more, start flowing with me more. They want to talk to me more. And if I shut it all down again, they start, they don't notice me as much. You know, we put this stuff off, guys, all the time. Um, I've talked about maybe doing a video. Uh, have we, do we have any videos of us just doing highs and demonstrating how people close off and open up? Uh, I'm not big on infield videos. People always ask me for infield. And, I'm not, I'm not not big on going out and doing infield videos. That's actually wrong. I said that wrong. I'm not big on doing uh, pickup videos of infield of women and taking them home at, with their face blurred out. I think that's really not cool to the women. Um, but going out and socializing, you know, talking to people, flirting, playing, that could be something we could start to look into um, and go from there. So, uh, but yeah, this whole idea, like I can, you know, when I see some of these girls talk and they're blurred and the guy takes, taking them home, pulling them out of a bar and it's a hidden camera video. And I'm like, if I knew her, I would know who she is. The only people that did infield the way I would consider ever doing it was, uh, an old company that's out of business now. 
and they would actually go, uh, it was, <laughs> they called it waiver game a long time ago, pick up one one They would uh, go flirt with a girl, get her phone number, walk away, say goodbye. Then they would come back to her, walk back up to her and tell her there was a hidden camera on her and ask her for a waiver. And then, and then they had to flirt some more to get the waiver and joke and they called it waiver game. And then uh, the girl gave permission to put it on the YouTube channel. And uh, that's the only form that seems to be an integrity. A um, lot of work though, a lot of work. That's what, another reason, a lot, of, a lot of time to get out and do that stuff. And especially if you start doing it in bars versus on the street, getting that stuff into the bars and all that, it's a lot of work. Um, uh, okay, Brian, I had a significant release recently where I cried intensely for an hour or so uh, for the abuse endured from my parents as a child. Thank you for the guidance to do this. Yeah, you're welcome, man. I no, long, I no longer have such a feeling of inner loneliness. That's huge. You'd like a whole lot of abandonment, most likely. And I'm working, that's one of the most important things to let go of, guys, is that abandonment. It's going to change your life. And I'm working towards recovery from codependency. That's awesome. I love hearing that. I love, see, they listen to this positive message and, and the way he's looking at it. He's looking at all the growth and how he's growing and how he's, this is going to help him to grow a lot and a lot faster. Thank you for your message and direction on getting this done. You're welcome. I love the, the compliment, but what I really love is how you're looking at it. You're looking at it from a place of release and growth, not from a place of I had to do this. And that means you're going to continue to grow and continue to grow because of the way you look at life. It's a worldview, Landon. Great job, man. Um, Shane, thank you, Brian. Uh, I noticed that I have a pattern of re-entering my old pain or stories rather than releasing and truly moving on. Um, yeah, that's probably because you're not really releasing them. You're probably telling yourself you release them because if you truly released it, you wouldn't re-enter. So there's either maybe you release a little bit and then you move on and a little bit. So you're gonna have to work on disidentifying first, Shane. So in releasing, there's a whole uh, program part on just welcoming, 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 and getting used to looking at it. And then you gotta let go of the want for releases, the needs for releases, the have tos. I wanna do a talk on wants, needs, have tos, shoulds in releasing. I've never done a talk on this. And I even, I even wanna put it into some of the programs, but releasing on those, can have a huge effect in your releasing because you're probably, because sometimes you, you're, you're trying to get out uh, these old pains and you're wanting and you're having to and you're needing to. And so the releases don't happen. And that's, a, and so because you're in the future. And so just welcoming the wants, needs, shoulds, and have tos and just not releasing it all for a while. Sometimes I've given people that when they're really stuck like this, the, the exercises are just welcoming all this stuff for a month straight, getting used to feeling everything, learning not to make it wrong. What will happen in that month if, if you can't release is you'll start to surrender. And then you'll get releases and you won't even be going for releases. You'll just get them. You get one after another after another. And, 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 or sometimes you'll, you'll just get really in touch with your emotional body and you'll start learning to accept your emotions. You learn to be happy even when you're sad. You'll be learning to be happy even when you're hurt. And that's powerful. That's the disidentification right there, Shane. Um, not resisting anger and acting on it is a way of emotionally releasing it? Question mark. Is that no? Yes. And no and yes. Um, not resisting. First, you don't resist the anger. You notice it. And then you notice where the anger is directed. It's directed at a person or it's directed at yourself, most likely. Uh, most likely. I'm angry at myself. I'm a loser. Or that person hurt me. And now I want to go yell at that person. I wouldn't recommend just going and yelling at that person. Um, if you need to stand up for yourself and you can use the anger proactively and say, you know what, I'm going to use this anger as courage and go stand up for myself in a healthy way. That's great. I have no problem with that. But one of the best things you can do with anger is notice inside of yourself why you're getting angry. And, the, and, the, and there's probably some other lower emotions, sadness, hurt, loneliness, abandonment. And then use the anger again as courage make it proactive and turn it in on your own uh, fear, sadness, loneliness, whatever you're feeling and say, I'm going to feel it fully. I'm going to use the anger as courage to feel this fully and sit with it. And it'll cause usually like a burning sensation, a heating sensation, something like that. And you just ride that out like uh, and, until it all subsides. And it's, it's, it's a act of taking a higher energy anger and facing a lower energy and using the higher energy to dissolve the lower energy, creating more courage, more and more courage and then ultimately acceptance. Um, and that's how you release that. Uh, Shane, I'm trying to get through all these. Huh. 
I and I'm a little over because I usually I don't I don't want to make these every Thursday an hour, but maybe we will. Who knows? I can see my uh, over an hour. Excuse me. I can see my arrogance and thinking. I already know uh, better has prevented me from true growth. Big things. I can see my yeah a lot of pride, and I want to go back to um, uh, who did I talk to earlier? Erich, uh, pride is one of the biggest blocks to growth. Pride is a judgment, uh, 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 constantly judging everything, constantly making it right or wrong, constantly deciding this is good or bad. And your arrogance is a part of pride. And pride is such a slippery energy, it's hard to see, and it stops your growth big time. Um, it implies that there has to be a winner and a loser, that I have to, if you're thinking like, I have to win at this, I have to beat everybody. I have to, I'm in competition. It's going to be really hard to grow. And that, that, that humbleness, that vulnerability that comes from being humble, you grow really fast. This last weekend, we, uh, we had a workshop about a, uh, our sexual transmutation workshop a few weeks ago or a week ago. And we had a guy in there and he's been in a several workshop and he just grows and grows and grows because he's so humble and so vulnerable, takes feedback, doesn't make it about, being right he just learns he just listens and the women love him he's so humble all the women just love being around him love watching him grow love talking to him and uh he's killing it he's changing a lot and um i just want to uh acknowledge him for that because that's that's rare to see somebody that humble in a workshop you know and uh and to grow at the rate he's growing um Another question about dating and age. I have uh, this voice or feeling in my mind that I am too old. I just hit 40. Congratulations. That's still, that's way young today, today's day and age. But I look younger, but some girls freak out when I say my real age. They're not really freaking out. They're just impressed probably. How to handle that? Does that, uh, does that really matter? Nah. Sam, <laughs> look, at, look up Sam. Sam Pond. He's one of our coaches. He's 64 right now. He was 63. Uh, when I did the interview with him or 62 when I did the interview with him. Um, and he keeps saying every year is the best year of his life. He dates women in their 20s. He's got a young energy. He's full of life. They don't care. They will freak out. They'll be like, oh my God, you look so much younger. But, I, you know, um, but women rarely, I mean, the only, they, they'll tell you you're too old when you feel old. You can be 35 and too old. You can be 60 and young. Women respond to how old you feel. Um, and that's all that really matters uh, is that two people, consenting adults, are together because they really, truly enjoy each other. I mean, two people could get, oh, yeah, I, am, I got somebody close to my same age, and they're perfect for me. They got all the boxes checked, but are you happy with them? Is one year with somebody you're not happy with worth it? You know? And somebody that's your same age, you know, they're like, oh, what happens when the person grows old? There's no guarantee any of us are going to grow old. Somebody could grow and get hit by a car tomorrow. You, you see what I mean? And there's no, you know, they, 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 so a 60-year-old could be dating a 30-year-old uh, and the 30-year-old gets hit by a car tomorrow. You see what I mean? It's, just, it's, it's all ridiculous. It's all planning for the future and trying to make it all perfect versus truly enjoying the human being and loving the human being in front of you. And uh, by the way, the, the genes, like that 60-year-old could have amazing genes. I have really good longevity genes. So I'll probably live to be very old. And with the modern technology, it's, I wouldn't be surprised if I break 100. And I think you could end up dating somebody else who doesn't, you know. And it's it just, it's so, there's so many ifs there and, and possibilities. And, and so... Look up Sam Pond's uh, interview and check out his uh, Facebook page, all on this stuff. Okay, is that it'll really change the way you look at. It. He's got tons of videos on his on his. He's got a, a Facebook page, and in the Fearless Brotherhood, he's starting to put up videos on this topic too because that's what he talks to. And um, and I'm fine with this for women too. If women are older and they want to date younger, go for it. Have fun, live your life, be happy. There are a lot of younger men looking for older women to date that love older women. And there's a lot of younger, older men that like younger women. As long as you're consenting adults and you're happy together, be happy. Um, does emotional release work for, uh, oh, by the way, I've, I've, I tell women my age all the time and I used to worry about it constantly. Back when I was in my 30s, I'd be like, oh my God, women are going to get mad if I, 
And then I would always make up some excuse not to tell them. And then now I just tell them, oh, I'm this age. And they go, oh, or they go, oh, wow, you look great for your age. Or, wow, you look young. Or, or really, oh my God, I would never would have guessed. But I've never had a woman say you're too old. Not once in my life. Um, so uh, actually I did. One woman I dated and we already had sex and we, had, we were really close. And she said, well, I was nervous about getting a relationship with you because of the age difference. But then she was still wanting to come see me. So she was still wanting to be around me. But she's the only one to ever say that all, the, all these years. Um, and I actually don't believe her. I think that was an excuse because it was more the long distance. If we lived in the same city, we, we live in different countries. So if we lived in the same city, it would have been a whole different story. Um, does emotional release work for, and I was hardly there. Does emotional release work for someone like me? I'm w waking up after four years of pushing in the wrong direction. Can I still change? Yes. That's my simple answer. I mean, it's, it seems like a, a leading question and you know it does um, or you wouldn't be here. Um, it's, it's like saying, can I grow? Please, it's please validate me is what it is. You're asking for validation there. So you have a need for validation and that's all part of emotional release work. Please tell me I'm not broken. Please tell me I'm not hurt. It's a little bit of victim consciousness and it has a little bit of a manipulation in the energy because you're not owning your own fears saying i am afraid of this you're saying please tell me i'm i can still change and i'll tell you right now anybody can change that wants to do the work the people you know who i wouldn't want to work with oh my god i would never want to be one of those therapists that gets assigned people uh, like by the court or people that are depressed that don't want to go to therapy but have to and they come in and they're being pushed in by their family and then you got to sit down and ah, oh, this sounds miserable i work with the willing if you're not willing go somewhere else I work with people that want to change, people that are ready to change, and people that are ready to get vulnerable. And uh, sometimes we get people in the classes that don't want to get vulnerable, and that's a big problem. So, um, yeah, uh, Samir, I got the feeling you did. It's in there. It's a really good description of, of it. So uh, make sure to check it out. Okay, I think we, the questions keep growing. We're well over an hour. We're getting close to an hour and a half. I don't think I can do much more here. Um, uh the best way to be a, tr a true student is to be uh, 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 is to drop all your your pride and and listen and 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 actually take feedback and don't take it as you did something wrong. Learn to let go of the idea that you're doing anything wrong and just learn to take feedback when you get corrections because that's a big problem with a lot of students. You know that vulnerability is huge. Um, uh, a, a good sign that I'm grounded, John, is feeling low on my body. Can I feel my legs? Can I feel the earth? Does it feel good? Like it should feel good. I should be able to feel, I feel like I see two, three feet into the ground. I feel relaxed. And then the world around me, how's it responding to me? You know, are people responding to me really well? Are they, or are they pulling back? The world will always respond in relationship to how in your body you are, how out of your body you are, how connected you are and so forth. Now, grounding doesn't mean that people will go on a date with you. It just means they'll be more comfortable with you usually. Um, so just kind of remember that, that you have to get your heart open, you, have to, you know, drop into your turn on, things like that, focus. But grounding is the key to all of that. Without grounding, you can't do any of the rest of that really well. So it's hard. Uh, and so I'm going to end it at this because uh, uh, I'm 51, almost 52. And I'll be 52 on the 7th of October. Yeah, is that and um and uh and da, 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 i plan to be the youngest 80 year old on the planet i've almost got my six-pack abs and I'm about a couple pounds away from a full six-pack and i'm building muscle now my goal is to put on the next year or two maybe i'll do some pictures of that i've dropped a lot of weight over the years if you look at the old youtube videos you can see how fat i was out of shape i was <laughs> And now my whole, the last year and a half, my core focus has been my health, uh, hormonal, physical, um, uh, mental, not dating. Uh, dating, I love teaching you guys, but my more, Sam Pond, by the way, he's at Pond, P-O-N-D. Uh, my main focus is, uh, is my health now. And, and, I, and I don't want to take uh, hormonal replacement like TRT or anything. I want to do it all naturally where I'm healing the body, learning the best diet, becoming superhuman, getting a really cool, a powerful mind that focuses. And then, um, 
and I love that stuff. I, I, it's just so interesting to me. And this all started because about a year, a year and a half ago, I was, I was just getting so tired on a ski trip. And I was actually started before that. I've been working on my health for a while, but on that ski trip, I was getting so tired. I didn't want to go out most days. So I cost many days. I didn't go out and I let the other guys go out and I was feeling it. And I was like, why is, you know, and I realized when I got back and I ran a lot of my blood work, my hormones were crashed and I didn't know why. And I started doing a deeper look at why this was, and, you know, the doctor wanted to give me some hormone replacement therapy. My, my t- testosterone was fine, but other hormones were down. And so I started to um, do a lot of work, bringing my hormones back up uh, as far as naturally cleaning up the diet even more. And I had, and what I figured out was I had a bunch of histamine responses going on in the body and allergens in the body to certain foods and, and my gut damage wasn't fully healed. It had healed a lot, but not worked completely. And so once I got everything out and I got really cleaned up, my hormones started coming up. I started to feel better. But then there was a lot of problems. Then I wasn't building muscle and I had to look at that. And so now everything's changed. Everything's starting to skyrocket up and I'm seeing the difference. And I can't wait till this season of skiing. I, I, my energy is so much better. And so my body is so much stronger. It's only getting stronger. So, um, so it'll be interesting to see what the next year holds as I continue to do this work. Um, uh, let's see what it was some, I'm just checking out your chats guys. Uh, okay guys. Um, and, uh, so everything is, uh, um everything is you know I, i'm just glancing Hold on one more time i keep reading and trying to talk at the same time thank you man i appreciate it shane remember remember october 7th guys you want to wish me a happy birthday um yeah a lot of people think i'm in my 30s or into my 30s especially when i take off the glass if i shave this beard guys i look like a fucking kid and <laughs> and uh i guarantee you my testosterone is really high um I, last time i checked it was around 600 something. And now I've done a ton of stuff to bring it even higher. I wouldn't be surprised if it was 800, 900, you know, um, and uh, I'm just feeling better and better. Um, and, uh, and so uh, more and more energy. So anyways, uh, I can't guarantee all these talks will be this long. Uh, this one, I just had, a, you know, the time today, love doing it. Um, what do we got coming up guys, uh, team, anything coming up we need to mention? We talked about, uh, the, today we talked about the releasing product, uh, revealing product, revealing masterclass, which is a fantastic class. People are changing their life with it. Um, and we got a couple work, we got some workshops coming up. Do you guys want to post it in the chat? What do we got? And anything that these guys need to know about and, um, the brotherhood, check out the brotherhood. If you haven't done that, we're starting to build that out big time. We're having the coaches post in there all the time. I'm going to be coasting there doing some live calls. That's our live online group where we do a lot of private work. It's just, it's a small monthly fee and that's where we can really do tons of great work. I'm glad you got some light bulbs, Reese. Uh, virtual fearless man live is coming up. What are the dates for that? Uh, Cairo, uh, there's a link to it right there. Actually the, the dates will be in the link. Just click on the link there. So that is our kind of our entry level live product. We, and, uh, we're doing it virtual for, you know, you don't have to travel here. We used to do it only live. I do a lot of the subcommunication demonstration there, and I talk about a lot of the qualities that make you a grounded, attractive man and break them down, demonstrate them, and talk about ways to practice them. For grounding as an example, tension as an example, demonstrate it with the model, demonstrate grounding, demonstrate tension, demonstrate turn on, demonstrate um, um, uh, uh, using penetrating energy, demonstrate using... Uh, receiving energy, demonstrate uh, touch and how it can be creepy and how it can be really grounding and sexy. And, and we demonstrate all that live in that class and all the subcommunication that goes with it. Somebody asked me about subcommunication. So make sure to check that one out. Um, it's, uh, it's a great one for just really seeing subtleties. And I, I love doing that class because it's light, it's relaxed, it's easy, and people learn a lot. They, they really realize how powerful one percent little changes and even one percent little attitude and communication affects the results a one percent change in your attitude can change your results massively over a month two months a year and it's the same thing in talking to another person one percent over five minutes in a change in your energy can cause a radical shift in the way the person responds to you uh two percent three percent this is a a, when so when somebody's not getting a change they're not usually going for the one percent they're trying to get a big change all at once and and a does a plant grow all at once? It's just sit there and watch a plant grow. Good luck with that. It grows slowly over time, but if you get if you relax and stop obsessing over it, you'll see the the beautiful growth. 
um, and, and it grows just a hair, then a hair, then a hair, but it compounds fast. So that's what the Fearless Man Live is about. Uh, click on that link now if you haven't clicked on it, all, everybody. Uh, love talking to you all. I'll see you guys next Thursday. And remember, only the confident really live. Take care, everybody. Have a beautiful day.